Uh, next one. I think it's Rishi. Rishi. Oh yes. Rishi, welcome. So Rishi, is your mic working? Ah, not yet. Test. Not yet. Sorry for this little inconvenience. Uh, Rishi, tell, uh, tell us about you. Where do you come from and what do you study? I think you come from, from another place, right? Uh, I come from India and I'm studying at uh, Taylor Munich right now. Uh, I'm studying satellite engineering and I'm working in the robotics and mechatronics department at uh, DLR, German Aerospace Woo! Center. And uh, today I will be demonstrating one of my hobby projects that I developed myself personally, uh, in which uh, I try to control my synthesizer using a tablet, an Android tablet. That's what I will be showing you today. Okay, so this sounds very promising, especially because I already know what is going on there. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Rishik, so did you come from Munich today for us? Yes, I did. And, uh, How is the hotel? I haven't been there yet. I thought so. <laughs> well, in any case, we are so nice and great and like, right, we're really nice. We pay hotels for our awesome slams. That also means that, for instance, if you wanted to slam, you come from Zurich, but you want to you know, have a nice hotel night with your girlfriend or something, you can like pretend you come from elsewhere, take a hotel with us, and you have a good night before you slam and then you win. In any case, Rishi, our boyfriend, same goes the other way around. Rishi, your presentation is called Touch the Right Knobs. It's about your project which makes music. Oh, is it bad? I'm sorry. It's, I hope you use my work. It's about how you make music too. Can't believe I'm the one working on something related to sound. <laughs> I, I, I switched it up, I think it's right off. Good. I need to get that. Synthesizer, uh, you have to make up excuses like an explosive diarrhea so that you don't have to go out and you have to spend time <laughs> trying to solve your uh, failed marriage with the synthesizer. And that is my failed marriage. And uh, it is a white, it needs a tan once in a while, and that's why it tries to give me trouble because I don't need one. <laughs> and uh, I think I made a mistake, I messed up with the title of my name. I was talking to my friend the other night and she asked me, are you delivering a talk on sex therapy? <laughs> and uh, yeah, as an engineer I work with uh, pins and uh, female sockets, but uh, let's just not get there, you know, let's just not get there. So it's a mistake, let's accept that. Now today I will be talking about music technology and mostly about the Android application that I developed to control my synthesizer. So I would be transmitting data from my tablet to the synthesizer and you can see it will be controlling some parameters on the synthesizer. 
Now, <laughs> before we get into music technology, we have to understand who are the kind of people who use this kind of technology. Firstly, you have the musicians who will play the instrument, and then you have the engineers who think they are doing something, but it's not really anything. <laughs> no? And uh, I used to work as a sound engineer for quite a long time, and uh, a lot of my friends would come by and ask me, hey man, can we get a recording done for free? And uh, they would have these weird requests, like, could you increase the brightness a little bit? The track sounds too sharp. And I would be like, there is no knob on my console that says brightness, but if I had something, maybe for your intelligence a little bit, you know? <laughs> But you have to understand that that is essentially how engineers and musicians talk. Musicians talk about the tonal quality of sound. And engineers talk about amplitude, frequency and phase, which makes no relevance in real life. <laughs> so, if any of you is planning to uh, get into music instruments and start a band, uh, the Guns, of Guns N' Roses, Pink Floyd, Deep Purple, well, I have a quick guide for you. If you are planning to become a guitarist or a drummer or a vocalist, well, things are going to go fine. You've made the first perfect choice in your life. You know, you're gonna have, you're gonna meet new people, you're gonna have a good social life. If you're lucky enough, you might even do a good uh, relationship. But I really sympathize, I really, really sympathize with the bass players. Because people listening to a bass player is like God listening to my prayers. But, but it's okay to have a belief, right? It is okay. But for the synthesizers, well, that's what I'm focusing on over here, well, good luck with life, because for the next few years, you would be holed up in a cave, trying to recreate some sounds, and then eventually when you come out and the sunlight just blinds you because you haven't seen sunlight in so many years, some guy named Dick is going to come by, and then he's going to tell you, man, this doesn't sound original, it sounds really synthetic. And it's going to piss you off, because it is synthesis, it is synthetic, it's supposed to be that. Now, what exactly is a synthesizer? Now, a synthesizer... <laughs> it has a lot of knobs and faders, and uh, the engineers, we just love knobs and faders. We are control freaks. We like to control every parameter. You know? So, on a serious note, synthesizing means to recreate something from existing pieces of something else. And in a synthesizer, we typically have generators of uh, sine waves, square wave, and triangle waves, and we pass them through different stages. And in those different stages, we try to mold a sound, to recreate a sound. It could sound something like uh, a very soulful piano, it could also sound like a really ugly, nasty fart. But your problem is that random guy named Dick is still going to come by and tell you, man, this doesn't sound like a fart. If you want a fart, give me bratwurst and beer. <laughs> and where would we go without the cats? You know? And that website, capsulesynthesizersinspace.com, is a real website. I have no idea which one of these I have no idea. Cats again, you know? If there, I would have thought if there was this one non photogenic cat, not a single one, not a fucking one. Well, a MIDI controller is basically a hardware or a software that is able to generate MIDI signals and uh, transmit them to a MIDI-enabled device. This synthesizer over here is by default MIDI-enabled. Now, some of you might have a question what a MIDI is, but you would not ask because uh, you just don't care or, or I am the one doing the talking. Well, MIDI is a standard for musical instruments to talk to each other or other computers. And it's been around uh, since the 1970s, it hasn't changed much. It's like the broken gramophone in my grandfather's attic, uh, which I sometimes like to fashion out with my friends. <laughs> Cats, again, yeah. So, MIDI signals allow us to control a synthesizer's parameters like volume, cutoff frequency, etc., etc. But you just can't control the intelligence of that random guy named Dick. Don't even try that. So my job was to develop this piece of software known as Medieval XY Controller. And uh, before we go further, you have to ask, what motivated me to create this piece of software? <coughs> if you think I was into music technology and into music engineering, well, that is not the obvious answer. The answer is I could not afford an iPhone. <laughs> I just could not. And all the software were available on the iPhone. And so I had to develop everything from scratch on the Android tablets. 
So what does this XY controller do? Well, uh, it has two axes, X and Y, and on the X axis you have uh, the volume, and on the Y axis you have another parameter, the cat's attractiveness. But I'm wrong. Cat's attraction quotient is a universal constant. <laughs> And now there's some jargon and some BS uh, about the application. Well, there's a user interface there, which is basically the interaction that you have with the tablet or the phone. That's how it looks like. <laughs> then you have the control interface layer, which is basically knobs and faders with which you can interact with the synthesizer. And then there's the communication layer, which is basically the USB on the Android device and the USB on the synthesizer, and you try to establish a communication between them. So that's basically how the whole software is learned to work. No, my XY interface is not as photogenic. So this is how the software looks like. On the top you can see five on-off switches, which can turn on and off some features on the XY controller. And then you have the XY pad itself, and then on the bottom you have control assigners. So over here we are trying to assign a parameter to the y-axis. And uh, well, for the x-axis you have to remember, give up. I mean, you can't control your x, can you? <laughs> so what is the future of MIDI controllers? Well, basically I was going through the Stanford website and they have come up with this really articulate sensor which can map individual strands of your hair and they are trying to map that into some kind of synthesizer input. I just don't understand because the point is once you get into synthesizers you're going to lose all of your hair anyways. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. That's what they're trying to do. And then finally I would like to say what well, I have made to say. Forgive me that I have a synth. Thank you. <laughs> So I have mapped the resonance and the cutoff frequency of my synthesizer to this uh, tablet over here. So I'm transmitting real-time data. And well, I don't have much time to give a live performance, but if I was given enough time, I would give you a whole set of performances that I can enable from my tablet to my synthesizer. That's basically the application. Thank you very much. Woo!